Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we will talk about Akisha Kersey's relationship with her second daughter, Rosemary, and how she used and continues to use her in her content while disregarding Rosie's safety and privacy. In part one, I will talk about everything that happened before Rosie's birth up to her hospital stay. This topic is sensitive, so please use your discretion. Unfortunately, a lot of Acacia's posts about Rosie have been deleted, and a lot of what she said about her was on live streams, but I'm going to try and show as much evidence as I can. All the sources I use will be linked down below. Less than a year after having her first daughter, Brindley, Acacia Kersey announced she was pregnant with her second. In March of 2018, she made an Instagram post where her daughter Brinley is holding a book titled How to Be a Big Cider. Shortly after the pregnancy announcement, Akisha and Jairus uploaded a video where they talked about their baby, pregnancy, and some complications that they were having. Probably start with hey guys. Hey guys. Hey guys, it's Akisha. And Jairus. And, um... We have a lot of stuff to talk about today. Uh, we have some really amazing news. We do. And we're gonna start. Three things to tell you. <laughs> Three things to tell you. First things first is that we are having a baby girl. <laughs> Another girl. But I'm, we'll see. I'm a baby maker of baby makers. We're gonna spread across the whole world. <laughs> um, um, second thing is that her name is Rosemary Keegan Kersey. I'll put it right here if you want to see how it's spelled. Um, and the third thing has to do with why her middle name is Keegan. Um, so Rosemary. <laughs> She has a heart condition that we found out about yesterday. It's called Tetralogy of Fallo. I think TOF for short. TOF? TOF? It's T-O-F. TOF? TOF. <laughs> TOF for, tough for short. Um, it is a condition where she has four um, it's a condition that affects all four chambers of, of the heart. So her right and left ventricle have a hole in between them. The left ventricle muscle is larger than it normally would be. Um, her pulmonary artery is really small um, because of that hole. So it, it decreases in size and it's really narrow. And her aorta is covering over the hole. Um, so there's um, a lot going on there. Good news is that it's, it's a condition that there's a lot of amazing people that have dedicated their life to uh, fixing this. Um, what will happen is we'll, we'll be going in for, you know, routine checkups. Um, Echographs, I think, is what what we'll do next, and then uh, we'll probably deliver in Portland because there's a whole uh, surgical team up there. Um, we won't know until a little bit later when she will have to have surgery, but it will be soon after she's born. Within the first year, they said um, they like to do the surgery, um, and because it is hard on her heart to um, work basically twice as hard as a normal heart. We are hoping that it does happen earlier. That'll also be easier on us, I think. Um, especially we don't think that Sean White had this condition. Cool. So, um, blessed we feel to be given this opportunity to let's talk about. I think the main thing that we want to touch on is that we want to express how um, blessed we feel to be given this opportunity to <sighs> to
to be the people that get to care for her and get to love her. We're lucky, really. It's, uh, we're talking with my parents and, you know, it was, the, your first thought is why me or why us? And then you, uh, <laughs> you start to realize why not us? You know, like, we can do this. We, we have love in our hearts. We have resources. We have family. We have everything that we could ever have for, um, this, for Rosemary. Acacia also called Rosie the forgotten baby in a video which is now deleted from her channel. So we call this baby the forgotten baby <laughs> um, because we I literally forget that I'm pregnant all the time and Jairus forgets I'm pregnant. Everyone in our whole family forgets I'm pregnant. It's just like nobody remembers that I'm having a baby. Um, that I'm almost halfway through. Like, it's been crazy. The Kersey's documented the pregnancy and posted about it extensively online, both on Instagram and YouTube. A lot of these posts are now deleted, and we will talk about the reason why in part two. Acacia and Jairus shared medical details about Rosie long before she was born. So we were at our ultrasound. Keep in mind the last ultrasound we had was when we found out that she had Tetralogy of Fallot. And if you're new here, she no longer has that. We were misdiagnosed. So we were kind of like, it was kind of nerve wracking going back in the same place that like diagnosed us with that. But we went back, they were like checking her out. Everything like looked good. I like watched her heart so intently and I made sure there was four chambers that were all like separated. But then they started talking about that her back two ventricles of her brain were enlarged. I tested negative for like Down syndrome and any other type of syndromes. So they are ruling that out for the cause of the enlarged ventricles. I can't remember what the other thing, they like looked for like bleeding I think, but there was nothing there. Basically they ruled out a bunch of stuff except for like a couple things like a bacterial infection, which I got my blood drawn for, or just like Maybe they're just enlarged, who really knows? So we have a MRI scheduled for next week in Portland. So we're going back up to Portland to the big hospital to get an MRI and have more ultrasounds and more tests and tons more stuff done. We went to Portland, we did the MRI, we did the ultrasounds, we met with doctors, yada, yada, yada. And basically, what we found out was a whole lot more. So, she has something called ACC. <laughs> she has something called ACC, which is a genesis of the, the corpus, corpus callosum. callosum. Corpus callosum. We're learning a lot of words, so that's fun. Um... Which basically, there's a, you guys have the, the right and left side of your brain, and then there's white matter in between called the corpus callosum, and it like, is basically like, it connects the two and like, is like a highway between the two. It also like divides them. She doesn't have one of those. 70% of people that have that have no idea they even have it, and they live completely normal lives, and they wouldn't find out until they like, get into a car accident and like, have like an MRI, and then later find out. Like, completely normal, nothing's wrong, nothing like that. But then there's like 30% of people that are just like slower learners or have like quirks when it comes to how their brain works, but it like, pretty much. And fun fact, Albert Einstein also had ACC. Yeah, so. And he was a genius. Because of that, her ventricles in the back are enlarged slash oddly misshapen. misshapen, which I mentioned in the last video. And then, on top of that, um, I don't have a very good placenta this time around. Um, and it's not working to its full capabilities. So I've been having ultrasounds once a week or twice a week, and I'm going to be continuing my ultrasounds for 
twice a week. To this is where it gets crazy. Hold your butts because I don't even know. Just hold your butts. <gasps> we are having a baby <laughs> in two weeks. That's right. Two weeks. September 3rd. 3rd. So my doctor has decided that it would be best to induce me and get her out, get her out early because she would do better on the outside than she would do with uh, inside my uterus. Acacia also posted photos on Twitter where she is sitting in the hot tub while pregnant with Rosie. She didn't take prenatals and said it was her doctor's recommendation to stop taking them. Not long after Rosemary's birth, the couple created merch based around her misdiagnosis. They designed shirts and mugs with the saying, Why not me on them? Which were sold on Acacia's page on Fanjoy, a company that creates merchandise for influencers and internet personalities. 50% of the profits from the merch were supposed to be donated to charity. In shop Acacia Kersey's Instagram post, Acacia is holding Rosie like a prop, and this was the caption announcing these items. Why not me? The quote from her video where we announced that Rosie was diagnosed with the trilogy of fallow. She was misdiagnosed. Our world got flipped upside down knowing that our unborn baby would be going through open heart surgery after she was born. We felt a lot of things during those long and hard days, but at the end of the day, we always felt extremely blessed. We never wanted to say things like, why not me? Why did this happen to me? So instead, we started saying, why not me? I'm strong, I'm capable, and I'm worthy. As we started saying this more and more, we realized the phrase had a double meaning. Why not me? Why can't good things happen to me? We're all worthy of what we've been given, and we've all been handed things because the universe knew we could conquer them. So next time you're feeling down, just remember, why not me? You are enough. 50% of the proceeds from the shirt and mug will go to multiple charities in Rosemary's name. It's unknown what happened with the profits made from the merch because Acacia never followed up on it, and slowly, it sold out and went out of stock like the rest of her merch. Acacia posted Rosie's birth video and started posting updates about her soon after. In her one month's update, Acacia talks about new information they learned about Rosemary in the NICU. This includes a genetic mutation which Acacia doesn't take seriously and seems to be in denial about. We also found out some more stuff in the NICU that we never mentioned in our videos. So, these are all really weird stuff and it really has like as of we know right now no effect on her but she only has 11 sets of ribs instead of 12 sets of ribs um which they have no idea why it's just like really random and then her vertebrae she has what's called a butterfly vertebrae and it's basically like two of her vertebrae are like they don't connect fully they just have like a little space in between them Oh, it's okay. Shh. Which also really means nothing. So back to what I was saying. Basically, her vertebrae and her ribs mean really nothing. Like they said the worst case scenario is like scoliosis, but um Hi. This is like weird while I'm bouncing while talking. So that's random news. <laughs> and then also they got our chromosome test back so like we did the test when i was pregnant about like down syndrome and those kind of uh syndromes with chromosomes and it came back negative but when we got her chromosome test back chromosome 20a at the like is deleted whatever that means and chromosome 20b is duplicated um and they don't really know <laughs> what that means again so basically she just has a bunch of really weird stuff like also her corpus callosum is missing you guys know that she's just she's very unique and she has a bunch of random stuff and they keep trying to like put it all together but it doesn't really mean anything to them 
and they see like no abnormalities with her as like as far as like eating and being like a normal baby she just is perfectly healthy in every other aspect so they're very confused and they don't know what to diagnose her with which i mean it doesn't really mean much to us because they're saying like not to worry and it really doesn't mean anything so we're like okay it doesn't mean anything yeah she's just a very unique special gal that's got special things about her i think the one thing that's super different about her than with brinley is that when we're in public a lot of people look at her and like are confused by how small she is and then they like ask a ton of questions and then we like go into this whole spiel and it's like then they start feeling bad and it's like don't feel bad because we don't feel bad i'm like it's okay like everything's fine like don't worry like so it becomes a whole ordeal when people start talking about her um even though she's basically just a normal baby you're a normal girl you just don't have as many ribs while not taking rosie's physical abnormalities seriously Akisha treated her completely differently than she did Brinley. This is to be expected because they're two different kids and have different needs. But Akisha's clear favoritism of Brinley and her inability to bond with Rosie became obvious very quickly. Akisha said that Rosie's development level will only become obvious when she starts going to school and the doctors can't diagnose her with anything besides the initial diagnosis of ACC. She wasn't advocating for Rosie or pushing doctors to diagnose her, and pretended that her genetic abnormality is not an issue. Akisha also denied that Rosie had any facial abnormalities that may indicate a genetic disorder, even dismissing a tweet from a follower who suggested that Rosie's features align with allergic syndrome. But Akisha said, Rosie does not have this. She denies that Rosie's looks have a deviation from a regular baby, and the only difference is that Rosie is underweight. Akisha was receiving many comments about Rosie's similarity and looks to her. Instead of seeing this as a compliment, Akisha became defensive and was tweeting passively aggressively about how she doesn't see it and thinks Rosie looks just like Jairus. She even blocked some people who pointed out the similarity between her and Rosie. After being called out, she started posting about how much her and Rosie look alike. Rosie was called sissy for about the first year of her life in Acacia's captions, tweets, and videos. Where are we, sissy? <laughs> oh, is sissy so excited? By calling her sissy, Acacia implies that Rosie's only purpose in life is to be Brinley's little sister. The Curseys also didn't put up any newborn photos of Rosemary in their home like they did with Brinley. Acacia said this was because they were waiting for Rosie to chunk up before they took any more photos of her. But it was later discovered through their photographer that the Curseys had a photoshoot for Rosie and didn't announce or post anything about it on social media. Later on, Acacia made sure to put up a photo of both of her daughters in the background of her videos to avoid criticism. Acacia also gave Rosemary nicknames like Elf, Dobby, and Monkey Girl but she never used them on Brinley, instead calling her Princess, Fairy, and other kid nicknames. When Opinion Twitter started calling Akisha out for this, she changed the way she talks about Rosie publicly. She started showing more affection and care towards her and started to call her Rosie, Rosie Posey, Posey, and eventually Popo. Akisha says that the reason for calling Rosemary Popo is because according to Akisha, she won't be able to say her own name. Do you ever call Rosie Rosemary? Never. Honestly, Jairus and I were just talking about that because I, I called her that the other day and I, it like felt so weird coming out of my mouth. The only people that call her Rosemary are people that like don't know her. So like if we go to a doctor's appointment and they've never met her before, then they call her like, is this Rosemary? Like I can't even say it normally. Rosemary. Honestly, we call her Popo now just because that's what she gets the easiest and and she that's what she gets the easiest i'm so bad at talking um but that's what she's going to be able to say so that's why we go with popo the most but it came from rose or rosemary to rosie to rosie posy to posy to popo and it, honestly it all started with 
uh, Jairus's mom. She was the first one to call her Popo. And it kind of just stuck. Acacia would often disregard her kids' hygiene. She would leave Rosie's nails long and dirty on multiple occasions, and her hair was constantly left unkempt and messy. She said that it's because Rosie is a long-nailed, curly-haired girl. She used the curly hair excuse multiple times when it's obvious that Rosie's hair is straight and unbrushed. Both Brinley and Rosie were pictured with unkempt hair many times, and Acacia posted in an Instagram story responding to criticism about Brinley's messy hair. She said that her daughter's hair is fine and curly, which gives it a messier look than usual. She also says she only brushes their hair after they get a shower and that there is more to life than neat hair. Once again, making excuses instead of learning how to care for her kids properly. When called out, Acacia started posting more photos and videos of her daughters with their hair done. This proves it was possible to keep their hair neat, but the Cursies chose not to. Rosie was constantly seen underdressed, often not wearing shoes or socks. People started noticing that Rosie's feet were extremely swollen and started speculating she had edema. And this was the reason Rosie wasn't wearing anything on her feet. But Acacia denied Rosie having edema and said that the reason for her not wearing anything on her feet is that Rosie pulls her socks off. The Cursies never gave Rosie any alternatives, like soft shoes, and just left her barefoot. On multiple occasions, including hikes, Rosie is underdressed compared to everyone else, wearing only socks, and she has a red nose. Acacia defended herself in a story, where she says that Rosie was dressed appropriately and that no one cares about Rosie like she does. Acacia also said that she asks her kids, the oldest being four years old, for consent to care for their hair, teeth, and general hygiene. I'm doing a teachable parent moment. Consent matters. Brindley's at that age where she makes her own decisions for most of her life, including whether or not I can brush her hair. Acacia says that her and Jairus don't shame their kids against choosing the obvious option when it comes to hygiene, which means they give their kids responsibility for their own care at a very young age when they are not ready to make mature decisions that will affect their long-term well-being. This is especially disturbing to me because the argument that children can give informed consent is an argument used by minor attracted people and it's false. Not only is it the parents' responsibility to protect their kids, but there is a reason that laws to protect minors exist. And that's because society recognizes that children's brains aren't developed enough to make responsible, mature decisions until they're at a certain age. And it doesn't seem that Akisha herself has reached that age yet. Rosie had a cradle cap for the first year of her life, and Acacia said that she had no intention of taking care of it, because it's supposed to go away on its own. Rosie's sweat glands are more active than other babies, which is why Rosie's cradle cap keeps coming back. Rosie's cradle cap was only removed when she had to go to the hospital for a heart procedure, and the nurses noticed how uncareful she was, so Acacia had no choice but to do it. Rosie would constantly be left alone on the ground on the beach, and at home. Acacia said that this was Rosie's tummy time, but she was rarely supervised, often left alone with a piece of food while she's lying down or shoved behind a couch cushion. Rosie's over here. Are you eating an apple? Are you eating an apple on the floor? Did daddy give you an apple? While editing, I realized I forgot to add that in a Twitch stream, the Cursey's large Australian Shepherd Lucy stepped on Rosie, and Acacia was very slow to respond. I hear Rosie crying. This wants you to back up really bad. Oh, I have to go help Rosie. I hear oh, her crying. Um, BRB, guys. Hi, guys. I'm back. Uh -huh. 
Everything good? Yeah. Lucy stepped on her. Oh no. Yeah. Acacia would post her kids with no clothes on in the tub or pool. She created a hashtag on Instagram dedicated to photos of her daughter in the tub. The kids were constantly used in ads, sponsorships, and to promote products that Acacia was selling. Acacia was excluding Rosie from celebrations and holidays, one example being Valentine's Day, when two-year-old Brinley got a card, but Rosie didn't because Acacia said she can't read. This one is for Jairus. I wrote him a note too. I didn't get Rosie a card this year. Um, probably next year though. By then she'll probably understand what's going on. Being called out, Akisha got her a card too. On a Twitch stream, Akisha said she isn't planning on celebrating Rosie's birthday because, according to her, one year birthday parties are for the parents and Rosie won't remember it anyway. For this reason, she decided to book a family Disney trip on Rosie's birthday and posted a countdown for the date of Rosie's birthday with the caption, Days till Disney. When a follower asked her why it's captioned this way, she blocked them. But Akisha celebrated Brinley's first birthday and posted all about it. Hey guys, it is Akisha and Jaris, and today is Brinley's first birthday. Woo! It is also her first Hi. birthday party. So my dad flew up from LA for her birthday. I think Jaris and Akisha have done like a, a really, really good job like for first year parents, especially Akisha. You forget that she's she's only 20 years old. The kids had the baby last year. I was here for the birth uh, on Mother's Day. And I was always surprised from the very beginning about how much they took to being parents, like they were naturally parents. So now they see them a year later, they're just as good as they were before, but now they have a lot of experience with this baby. So the new coming baby, I, I think it'll be better the second time through. Birthday is a great place to celebrate happiness. Rosie always seemed like a mellow baby, but around a year after her birth, Acacia was being criticized because it seemed like Rosie wasn't hitting milestones and Acacia didn't seem concerned about it. Twitter users started questioning if Acacia takes Rosie to physical therapy because she posted a lot of detailed information about Rosie but nothing about taking her to therapy. Acacia was posting photos of Rosie achieving milestones that she clearly was not and her discomfort is obvious. About a year later, Acacia started posting photos and videos of Rosie in therapy, and her progress was becoming more obvious too. Acacia wasn't sure if investing in a high chair for Rosie is worth the price, but has no problem spending hundreds of dollars on her other kids without hesitation, buying an extremely expensive pump and a baby rocker when she had her third child, and spending thousands of dollars on Christmas gifts for Brinley. This is Brinley's main huge present. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably already saw it. It is this gorgeous kitchen from Milton and Goose. I also got the refrigerator, but it's not here until Monday. It's so cool. It's so beautiful. She is going to be obsessed with it. It's basically all she's asked for for Christmas. Number one, every time she'll say kitchen set, kitchen set, kitchen set. So to go along with her kitchen, she got a Mamma Mia pizzeria. Wow. Makes me want pizza already. I really actually do want pizza. She wanted stuff that she could cut, so we got all the Melissa and Doug sets. But this one you can customize the pizza. We're probably going to throw away all the pepperoni slices. <laughs> right. The next set we got from Melissa and Doug is just this food set. What's in there, Jairus? Wow, so what we got here is looks like a slice of watermelon, a baguette. We got a cucumber, an apple, a pear. We have a cantaloupe, kiwi, orange, banana, pear, lemon, strawberry, knife. Also known as a fruit box. Fruit box. And the last set we got, which we kind of feel like the, we were deciding whether or not to get the pizza or this set, but then we were like, why not both? So, we got the cookie set. You can frost them and bake them. And, uh. Wow. Smells good already. Wow. Acacia defended herself in an Instagram comment and says Rosie is seeing many doctors monthly and that what they show on camera doesn't reflect their life. In May of 2020, Rosie was rushed to the hospital. I'm going to have to end part one here. 
because there is still a lot to talk about and I don't want this video getting any longer than it already is. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I'll see you in part two.